Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. In the previous sessions, we discussed about the first point. Uh, you know, the first part of the point, how we can open the lesson and how we can send the lesson uh, to the students uh, for the way beginners in the chat box. So in the today's session, inshallah, we'll continue that part, which is how we can open the and we, how we can send the lesson to the students who are uh, who are not beginners, who are seniors. So first thing which we can discuss in the today's session is about the students uh, who are senior, how we can open the lesson for them uh, in the chat box. Uh, I mean to say how we can open the lesson for them and then how we can send the lesson uh, to them in the chat box so for them for the seniors for that okay for the seniors i just shared the lesson i hope after that you all will be able to see the uh, things on my screen for the way seniors we just need to go on the file uh, you know, uh, we have to go on the file and then we have to open the lesson. For that, we just need to click on the desired page, the desired lesson. For that, we just need to click, double click on that page, which, uh, you know, the lesson we have to open, we have to want to teach to our student. For that, we just need to click, double uh, click on that page, the desired page. And once we open that lesson, after that, we have to uh, magnifying the lesson. Let me Okay, once you make, uh, once you open the desired page, which you have to teach to your senior students, because before before we uh, discuss in more detail how we can open the lessons for the way beginners, uh, that uh, you know that was a quite uh, you can say required uh, uh, you know uh, uh, we have to open them the lesson in the paint and we have to do different kind of activity, uh, different kind of activities to make the lesson more easier for them. But for the seniors, it's very easy to open the lesson for them. We just need to open the page, uh, open the lesson which we have to uh, which we have to teach them on that day. After that, by using the zoom in and zoom out option, we can adjust the size of the page. By using that zoom in option, we can magnify the page here. And then we can adjust this, uh, the page here. And after that, when the students start the second last or the last row, we just need to click on that the last row and just click on it, hold on it, and hold on it, and then drag here. Like in that way, in that way, we'll be able to show the further lesson to our student. So for the seniors, it's very easy to open the lesson for them. We, for that, we just need to go on the file. We have to click double click on the page on the lesson to open to open it. And after that, we just uh, make to uh, make to make it more magnified. And we can uh, we can you know we can make the movement by uh, putting the cursor. Just pause here. The student is uh, just start that row, the last row. And now we want to show the further lesson to our student. For that, we just need to click on that uh, the last row. We just need to click on the last row here and then click on it, hold on it, and then drag upward. After that, in that way, we will be able to uh, show the further rows to further lesson to our students. So that's the way easy way to open the lesson, to magnifying the lesson for the way senior. Similarly, when the student complete, uh, you know, completes the that page. After that, by clicking on that next option, we can uh, we can uh, open the next page. And by using the same steps, we can magnifying the lesson. We can, uh, you know, we can show the further lines to our students. So again, uh, to make the lesson more prominent for the students, we can just, uh, you know, we can uh, we can move the cursor according to the, we can move the cursor with every word. We can move the cursor with every row. It's story totally depend upon the student convenience and your convenience. So we can move the cursor word to word. We can move the cursor after some time. We can move the cursor just to indicate the student like we're, uh, you know, we're uh, from where we have to start from where you are teaching right now. So uh, for that, we can move the cursor uh, word to word. We can move the cursor a uh, row to row or with after, you know, after some time we can move the cursor so that's the way easy way to open the lesson for the way uh, you know uh, for the students who are seniors who can recite the lesson way easily and now the same thing for them now we want to send them the lesson in the chat box uh, to send them the lesson in the chat box we have to follow the same steps uh, we have to open the lesson in the pane because after that we will be able to copy the lesson and then send them the lesson in the chat box for that we have to follow the same things as we did for the way beginners we just need to click right on that page when you click right on that page you will see the further option open with click on that option after that you will see another option which will be the paint option as we want to open the lesson in the paint and when you click on the paint option further, you will see now the lesson is open in the paint as after that you have to mark the lesson because for the way seniors, there is no need to, you know, do the extra things. We have to do the ex extra things. We have to make the lesson more prominent. We have to make the lesson more interesting only for the way beginners because for them, it's uh, quite difficult to understand all these things. But for the seniors where they end the lesson, we have to just need to mark and, you know, for the mark, for any, uh, for any further uh, visibility, we have to 
choose any of the color you know to make the lesson more prominent to make anything prominent we have to choose any of these uh, you know uh, shapes for that we just i'm just going to click on that shape and you can adjust the size of anything any shape from here from the size option uh, uh, you know you can choose any color from these colors and you can mark like from uh, where we end on that day and from we will we have to start on the next day we can mark the lesson and after again uh, to copy the entire page to some, in, the entire page or to copy the entire thing we just need to click on that select option at the top of the left side and again put the cursor from where you want to select click on it and then drag till the part you want to uh, select and I want as I want to select the entire page. So here I just select the entire page again, put the cursor inside the shape, click on it. And after that, uh, you will see the option copy. Now the lesson is copied and now it's completely clear that the student uh, inside till that words. And from the next class, we have to start from the uh, next uh, words. So now we have to send them the lesson in the uh, chat box for them. You you know, if you uh, if on that time you if you were you are taking the classes uh, from any app from the Skype or, or the Zoom app, you just need to go on the chat box. Here you just need to go on the chat box and now you can paste the Paste the copied lesson here in the chat box and then you can send it to in uh, uh, to your student in the chat box. So once you send the lesson into uh, into the chat box to your student, after that you can uh, you can say to your student, I just send the lesson to you in the chat box. In that way you can send the lesson in the chat box and after that you can say to your student, I just send the lesson to you in the chat box and whenever you have the spare time you can practice. Uh, whenever students say yes or I will, that uh, you know, that kind of reply. So here we can teach them whenever we are we are you know planning for the future we are saying something for the future we should say inshallah what should we say inshallah and again we have to teach them with the meaning what's the meaning of inshallah we uh, when uh, the meaning of inshallah is if allah wills and further we can explain what's the meaning you know uh, we can include the further things why should we say inshallah like alhamdulillah what's the barakah of seeing all these things like when should we say alhamdulillah as we discuss in more detail and here we can say uh, inshallah and again when we uh, send them the lesson uh, i mean to say when we send them anything like uh, according uh, i mean to say we practice that we discussed that thing before when we send uh, the any kind of you know pick any we draw something for them in the paint after that when we ask them do you like it so on that time at the end of the class we should uh, teach them like we should say whenever someone does a uh, favor for us we should say jazakallah khaira or jazakallah khairan kathira so we have to develop these basic and very easy things to our student and we can explain the further things regarding these uh, you know uh, or regarding these basic things with the time uh, you know uh, like in the two classes and three classes and then we have to make the uh, practice uh, with our student so that's the way easy way how we can send the lesson for the uh, how we can open the lesson and how we can send the lesson to the uh, to the students who are seniors to the point how we can open the lesson and how we can send the lesson to the students. Uh, we categorize uh, that point to two categories and the first was for the beginners and the second was for the seniors. Now that point is completely, uh, we completed that point properly and now we are moving towards the other one, other uh, point, which which is uh, how we can draw something for them in the paint. For that simply you just need to go on the paint app. Here uh, from your computer you just need to go on the paint app. Okay, open the paint app and again by using the shapes as you can see uh, at the top of that app you can see the different shapes you can draw anything for them any star two stars three stars you can draw the cloud emoji for them here with some raindrops. So at the end of the lesson, as we discussed before, we have to reward the 30 minutes in a way like the two, first 10 or, uh, you know, the, I mean to say first 20 or 22 minutes for the Qaeda or the Quran class. Uh, the next seven or eight minutes for the other stuff like the Kalimas, the prayers uh, or the Swala lesson, you know, all that thing, the Aytul Kursi, the Qanud prayer, all that things we have, you know, the prayer after Azan. And then we also have to explain uh, them, uh, you know, the prop, uh, I mean to say the Barakah, of all these things, the benefits of all these things. And what's the purpose of reciting all these things and then the seven or eight minutes for all these things and at the end we have to draw something for them in the paint as we discussed before and for that you just need to go on the paint app you can draw anything you can see the stars are here at the bottom you can see the hearts are here the lightning is here and you know the different shapes are here you can draw anything for them here now i want to draw the you know the uh, the the cloud emoji for uh, today for them uh, or and after that
okay so also with some raindrops for that you just need to uh, you know you just need to click any of the shapes from here at the top and then uh, the same way as we uh, draw uh, you know as we draw the circle in the previous classes we we can draw any shape like just i want to draw some raindrops i just need to put the cursor from where i want to draw click on it hold on it and then drag as much as you want to draw so uh, in the same way we can draw anything just pause if, if I want to draw a star here, just need to click on the star and then put the cursor any place where you want to from uh, you want to draw. Click on it, hold on it, and then you can make the star as much as bigger as you want. So after that, we can fill the, uh, the colors according to their choice by using that option from here. You can fill the colors from all the shapes. You know, in one day you can draw any one thing, other day you can draw any other thing according to your choice. You know, one day you can draw one star, the hearts, or, you know, the cloud emojis, the smiley faces, different shapes you want to draw, you can uh, draw for them in the Paint. And uh, after that, when you draw something for them in the paint, you, in paint, you can ask them, here, I, it looks so nice, mashallah, you choose all the colors very, you know, all the colors very well. So because, you know, uh, the other basic point is, first basic point is we have to engage them with the lesson. That was very, very important point, which I am discussing again and again. And the second point, which is very, very important, that we have to appreciate, appreciate them. If they repeat the letters properly, then we have to appreciate, yes, you're reading very well. And again, after filling the color, we have to appreciate them uh, that, mashallah, you choose all the colors very well. It looks so nice do you like it whenever they reply only yes we like it then you know as i discussed before here we have to teach them we should say jazakallahu khairan whenever someone does a favor for us and or jazakallahu khairan kathira according to the student capability if the student is able to understand and again we can uh, do that thing with the time you know in the first day we can just teach them jazakallah in the next after two or three days when the student get the command to say jazakallah we can include jazakallahu khaira after that we can include the further thing with the meaning what's the meaning of jazakallah if we include jazakallah khaira then what's the meaning becomes so we can teach them further according uh, you know according to, to the student capability and with the time we can and again, uh, we can send them in the chat box again for, to select anything. We just need to click on the select option. And after that, from here, you want to select for the cursor uh, on that, uh, you know, on that point, click on it, hold on it, and then click uh, between the shape and then copy that thing, go on any app, and then send the lesson to your student in the chat box here. And again, you can mention if the if uh, the two kids, if the three kids that uh, you know are will take the classes, uh, you know, uh, from one family. So you can mention here the name, like you know, the lesson for that kid, the lesson for that kid, uh, because it will be easier for them and for us as well. So here you can write here, you know, the lesson. Just pause here. I want to write here the lesson for Aisha. So I can write here the lesson for Aisha. You know, the lesson for Aisha. That lesson is for Aisha, or the next lesson is for any other person. So you can mention here that lesson is for that specific kid. If this, if one, uh, you know, if there are many students, if uh, many students will take the class from uh, one family. So that's the way how we can open the lesson, how we can send the lesson, how we can draw something for them in the paint, and how we can develop uh, the small things in our uh, in our students. And we we have to make the practice for that. And again, we can include the different things that, that you know the more detail with the time. Uh, you know, as I just discussed before, like how. Uh, what's the barakah of saying alhamdulillah what's the barakah uh, how why should we say inshallah and uh, what's the meaning of jazakallah khairan kathira so these are the very basic and easy uh, you know e uh, easy things which we can develop easily into our uh, students and uh, uh, you know we should that's the uh, we complete that uh, that point and now we are moving towards the next point which is how we can start uh, every new chapter properly and for that again the basic thing is first we have to engage uh, engage the student with the lesson and you know to engage the, how we can engage the student with the lesson by asking any one or two question uh, we can ask the question uh, you know uh, we can ask the question that you know um, uh, I'm just we are just going to start a new lesson so are you excited to start a new lesson we can ask that question or we can ask the question did you find the yesterday's lesson easy or interesting we just to you know we can ask anything for them just to engage them and after that we have to explain we have to explain anything i mean to say we have to explain all the things about the new lesson uh, like in that lesson we are going to learn about that new thing just pause i'm going to like i'm just going to open 
uh, the fourth lesson, which is the very, very basic lesson, which is about the uh, three signs, the sign of Zubair, Zaid, Page. So before going to start that lesson, we have to explain in the way like in the today's lesson we are going to learn about the three signs the new three signs which gonna and for that the lesson gonna be very very interesting so can you see the three signs on the screen here you have you ha also for the beginners you have to open the things in the pane as we discuss in detail because i have to move further uh, for that i'm not, not opening uh, in the uh, pane so for that you uh, before going to start the very basic lesson you can uh, you can uh, explain that thing in that lesson we are we are going to learn about the three new signs and for that that lesson is going to be very very interesting because when we include when we include these kind of sentences it make the lesson more easier for the students and can you see the first and second both the signs are same we have to make you know we have to draw something around these shapes by opening the lesson after opening the lesson in the paint and can you see both first uh, two signs are same and the third one is one is only different but it also looks like a letter and can you tell me uh, that sign looks like uh, uh, like which with uh, which letter and that that sign is looks like the letter wow do you remember it looks like wow but it's a way smaller in size so after that we can explain further the sign which always comes up uh, and uh, the letter it will be now i mean to say the name of that beautiful sign is uh, the zebra sign the sign whenever the same sign comes below the letter the name of that beautiful sign is uh, the zero sign and similarly the sign which looks like the letter wow it, it the name of that beautiful sign is page and uh, there are three ways to pronounce uh, the sign Zabar Zair Page. I'm just going to uh, mention here again. Uh, for that, for the more correct pronunciation, you can Google uh, the pronunciation of the signs, how we can pronounce the Zabar Zair Page sign in Arabic. So the first way you all know properly uh, the Zabar Zair Page, and then further Do Zabar, Do Zair, Do Page, and again, uh, the Kari Zabar, Kari Zair, and Ulta Page. We know all these, uh, the name of the signs, but more convenient, convenient ways we have to teach them in the, uh, you know, in English language, which is for Zabar, it's Fatha for Zay, it's Kasra for Pish, it's Dama. Fatha, Kasra, Dama. And again, for those Zabar, we have to replace the word Do uh, with the uh, double. With the word double. Uh, for uh, for Kari, we have to replace the word uh, with uh, standing. So for those Zabar, those Zay, Do Pish, it's going to be uh, double Fatha, double Kasra, double Dama. And for standing, uh, for uh, Kari Zabar, Kari Zay, Ulta Pish, it's going to be a standing Fatha, standing Kasra, standing Dama. Fatha, Kasra, Dama, double Fatha, double Kasra, double Dama. And standing Fatha, standing Kasra, standing Dama. And, uh, you know, uh, some uh, some parents demand to uh, to teach uh, their kids in pure Arabic language. So the basic uh, basic pronunciation is same, which is Fatha, Kasra, Dama. But for double Fatha, double Kasra, double Dama is Fatha, Tain, Kasra, Tain, and Dama, Tain. And for standing Fatha, standing Kasra, standing Dama is uh, Fatha Tawila, Kasra Tawila, and Dama Tawila. To make it more clear to, you know, to know about more properly, you just need to go uh, on Google and you can just search that how we can pronounce uh, the signs, uh, Zabar, Zair, Page, or all the, these signs in the Arabic language or in the English language, then you will get. For English language, it's very easy for the students and for us, you know, uh, because uh, to pronounce Kari Zabar, Kari Zair, Ulta Page, it's going to be quite difficult for them to pronounce. So if we say double Fatha, double Kasra, double Dhamma, it's very, very easy to uh, for them to pronounce. So the more uh, good way is we have to teach them in the English way, which is Fatha, Kasra, Dhamma, double Fatha, double Kasra, double Dhamma, and then standing Fatha, standing Kasra, and standing Dhamma. So in that way, we can, uh, the you know, uh, these are the three ways we can teach to our students. And after that, after, you know, first we have to teach them, you know, that one is Fatha, that one is Kasra, that one is Dhamma. And then we have to make the repetition. So can you tell me when the sign comes up, what's the name of their sign? Fatha. When it comes below, it's Kasra. When, what's the name of their sign? It's Dhamma. And after that, you can explain about the letter Hamza. And now I am going to tell you about a very, very important thing about Alif. Before we read that when there is a straight line, it's Alif, right? But it's a very important and very interesting thing about Alif. Whenever Alif comes with any new sign, so the new name of Alif becomes Hamza. What's the new name of Alif becomes? Hamza. Or you can see Alif changes its name into Hamza. So we have to introduce that thing here in that lesson, and after that we have to uh, we have to teach the lesson. Like uh, in, we have to read that lesson. We have to read all the letters with the signs in the V. First we have to read the letter, then sign, then sound. Letter, sign, sound. Letter, sign, sound. So the letter is Hamza, right? 
sign is fatha and now the sound gonna be a hamza fatha a and make the repetition until the student know that thing properly then we have to move towards the next letter similarly we have to make the repetition we have to do the same steps same things and uh, you know the our main target should be whenever the student complete that lesson the student uh, know about properly about all the signs and how how we have to pronounce the sounds and also we have to teach them we have to say the sounds not you know not in a jerking way and not by stretching the sounds we have to say uh, gradually and without jerking sound we have to say a e u in that way not a e u like in that way whenever the student you know uh, uh, you know do any kind of mistake so we also guide uh, in that way similarly for the next lesson we have to do rest of the things in the same way but we can include here we can start in the way uh, so can you see all the signs are double here so when the signs becomes double uh, then we call them double fatha double kasra double dhamma and again we can include one thing here so can you see here sometimes alif here in front of double fatha and sometimes you know if there is any kind of letter comes in front of double fatha in front of double kasra in front of double dhamma can you see ya is here again in front of double fatha so whenever any letter comes in front of double fatha double kasra double dhamma that letter is considered as a silent letter means there is no need to consider that letter that letter is silent letter or you can uh, make the resemblance with the english language uh, so it, it, it's not uh, much need to res to resemble here but if you want you can make the resemble with the english language some letters are silent so you can make the resemble with that language but here we we also have to mention now alif is silent now we have to say only meem double fatha man then meem double kasra min and meem double dama mun and after that you know to make it more easy uh you can uh, not you know all the things uh, there is no need to explain all the things in one day uh, we can uh, we can we can also explain one day but if the student is very very beginner like if the student find difficulty to understand all the things you know in one day then we uh, we have to teach all these things but gradually like one thing one day second thing second day in that way so again we can uh, you know we can include that thing i noticing one thing one thing is comma in all uh, you know in all these letters i'm mean, interested in all these sounds if we read any letter with double fatha double kasra double dhamma the ending sound is same right if we say man min mun or ban bin bun so the ending sound is the sound of letter noon or we can say the b i'm mean, interested the n letter sound right so we can uh, we can uh, explain these kind of things to make the lesson more easier for them similarly for the next letter uh, for the next lesson standing fatha standing kasra standing dama we can explain the same way uh, as we did uh, for the fatha kasra and dama and before going to start the words lesson like that one we have to explain the same way like in that lesson we are going to read the words by joining the different sounds of different letters can you see here so uh, you have to explain that like further first we have to read the first letter as we did in the previous one and then you have to teach them the second letter and after that you have to say in first we have to join the first two sounds and then the next sound with the previous two sounds so we have to you know the same thing we have to do we have to explain the things in that lesson we are going to uh, learn about the words by joining the different sounds of different letters so in the first word we're going to join the three sounds of three letter first is the sound for alif second is the sound for ba and the third is for the sound for dal so first we have to say da one then say we, after reading the next second letter ba fatha ba we, now we have to join both the sounds now say the third sound and then add then we have to join all the sounds and you know in da word ana we can explain here uh, you know whenever uh, whenever in uh, ana that word ana comes in the quran we have to see a quick sound and there is no need to consider alif only for the word ana so you you can explain whenever there is any kind of new thing so we can take more time and then we have to explain properly so uh, because when I, whenever uh, after uh, when we explain the when the um, when the kid will read uh, the lesson of the madda letters then the kid will know it uh, you know know that thing more properly because it's alif madda according to rule you know it's alif whenever alif comes in front of fatha we know it's alif madda but here we have to we can only explain here you know whenever the word ana word comes in the quran that that thing is very very important when you know whenever you going to teach any new thing uh, you know any important thing we have to uh, use that kind of sentence you know that is that is very very important thing which i going to i'm going to discuss about that letter whenever that letter you will see that word uh, that word in the quran we have to see a very quick sound for both the letters and in that word there is no need to consider alif so we have to say hamza fatha and the noon fatha na ana ana a quick sound 
so similarly basically uh, we uh, before going to start any lesson we have to engage the, the student with the lesson by asking any one or two question then we have to explain the things and again in the lesson if there is any new thing we can take more time on that lesson because there is no need uh, you know someone asked me during the session like my student is uh, you know my student uh, find difficult to to pronounce the entire word you know uh, like the word of the kalima or any word so you know they is not compulsory to teach uh, to teach them the entire word or uh, you know the entire thing in one day but the thing is any part which uh, we teach them uh, that should be correct and that the, the student should find that thing easier like if the student is finding uh, find difficult to uh, to join the sounds then it's quite enough if the student is only understand in one class how we have to read the letter if the student is not able to pronounce that word properly that's totally fine right so uh, because uh, no one can understand the things uh, you know one time some can, can understand but some take two uh, you know um, you can say uh, that some can understand in two classes in three classes in four classes because everyone is different so we can teach them only the first two sounds so like the hamza fatha a then ba fatha ba how we can join a ba first is a ba so in the last we can include the third sound so we have to move gradually towards the next sound or the next word because it's not compulsory to teach them the entire thing the whole thing in one day the thing which is very very important we have to teach uh, them in the way they find the thing easy and we can teach them in parts but we have to teach them correctly so for the important things for the different things we can take much more time and but the thing is we have to teach them properly that's the uh, another more important point similarly for the next lesson for standing fatha standing kasra standing dama we have to explain the same way as we uh, you know as we uh, as i just discussed before uh, for the fatha kasra and dama and similarly for the uh, for the lesson before the lesson about the madda letters the madda or lean letters we have to explain Okay, we can explain like in that lesson we are going to learn about the. Okay, for the mother letters we can explain that in that lesson we are going to learn about the three mother letters. How many mother letters? Three mother letters. And you know that's a new thing. We can make the repetition two times, three times, four times. Again, uh, depend upon the student capability. So in that lesson we are going to learn about the three mother letters. How many mother letters? Three mother letters. And today we will we will discuss only about the alif mother. And what is alif mother? Alif mother is. When our alif comes in front of fatha, that is called alif madda. What is alif madda? When our alif comes in front of fatha, that is alif madda. Okay, so we can uh, we can explain uh, about only alif madda only in one class. What is alif madda? Whenever alif comes in front of fatha, that is alif madda, and you have to highlight. you know in the same way by opening the lesson in the paint and then you have to highlight anything uh, which you uh, you know which you have to explain to your student so you have to highlight that thing because if i am uh, if i am talking about that letter or that letter that story is uh, it's not quite enough uh, you know uh, for the student to understand or to open that way properly so for that we have to highlight anything which we are uh, you know which we have to discuss uh, with our students so uh, for alif madda in the in the first class you can only disc uh, you can only discuss about the alif madda alif madda that is whenever alif is uh, alif comes in front of fatha that is alif madda like can you see in all these letter there is alif and alif is seen in front of fatha it doesn't matter which letter having alif can you see the first is hamza the second is da the third is seen and the fourth is sad but the letter who have fatha sign doesn't matter but if there is fatha and the next letter is alif so that condition we call alif madda what's the name of that condition alif madda and you can ask again what is alif madda whenever alif comes in front of fatha that is alif madda so how now the thing is how we have to read the madda letters whenever we read the madda letters we have to stretch them for one second how long one second you can again explain how we can uh, how we can in, uh, how we can uh, you can say how we can uh, in, uh, how we can maye one second how we can count one second so we can count one second uh, you just need to close all the fingers of your hand just open any one finger of your hand not very quick not very slow open the any one finger of your hand gradually so that time period is considered as one second so in that way uh, we can count one second 
so uh, you know we can explain that thing similarly for the uh, wow mada and ya mada we can explain the same way wow mada is whenever wow sakin comes in front of dama that is wow mada whenever ya sakin comes in front of zir or in front of kasra or you know whenever wow mada comes uh, wow sakin comes in front of dama that is wow mada whenever ya sakin comes in front of kasra that is ya mada again like the alif mada we uh, like wow mada we have to straight the ya mada for one second or like uh, like alif mada we have to straight the wow mada for one second so gradually we have to include all these things until the student know all these things properly and once we can include you know in the in the fourth page we can uh, include alif madda then waw madda then ya madda when the student know about properly then we can include the same we like all the madda letters together like seen alif fatha sa then seen waw damasu then seen ya kasra si like in that way sa su si like we can read in that way but in the beginning we can include only uh, one madda letter first day then second madda letter for second day and then third madda letter for the uh, third day but the thing which is very very important and we have to uh we have to uh you know uh, when after the completion of that lesson the student must know about all these things about all the madda letters so uh, after that we have to move towards the next uh, you know next lesson the next uh, uh, you know the next lesson or you know the next part of the lesson similarly for the lee letters we can explain here like there are two lee letters before we read the three madda letters but there are only two lee letters and for the lee uh, uh, lee letters are whenever only fatha sign not any other sign when Oh, you can tell me there uh, you can tell them there is only two lean letters wow lean or ya lean how many lean letters two lean letters wow lean and ya lean and then you can move towards the next one wow lean is whenever fatha comes uh, for wow and ya lean for both the for both the lean letters the condition is same whenever there is only fatha sign uh, you know in uh, uh, before wow sakin or ya sakin so we call it's wow lean or ya lean and for the lean letters there is no need to stress the sound we have to see a quick sound but without jerking without uh, you know without jerking without stretching then we can teach them is dad wow fatha wow and uh, similarly uh, we we have we can include there uh, here like we have to follow the same way first we have to read the letters then sign then sound and then we can uh, make the repetition until the student know that thing properly and then we have to move towards the next one so that's about the mother letters and about the lean letters similarly for the next letter for the jism letter then you have to teach them the other things in the same way and now for the jism letter uh, the 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 let uh, the jism sign uh, the the lesson about the jism sign we can explain again the same thing can you see the small dal shape is here and you can uh, start again with the same uh, with in the same way to, in the in the today's lesson we are going to learn about the a new sign the entire lesson is only about one sign means that lesson going to be way way easy because there is only one sign for which we uh, we have to practice we're going to practice we're going to learn uh, in that lesson so after that you have to uh, uh, you have to make the jism sign more uh, clear for them and then you can ask can you see that sign is looks like a small dal right it looks like a, the letter dal but it's very small so the name of that sign which always comes at the top of the letters and also looks like the looks like the letter dal the name of that beautiful sign is jism what's the name of that sign it's jism so now how you know again you have to make the repetition until the student know about the name name of that sign properly and then you can further include how now the thing is how we have to read the letter who have the jism sign so as you can see by having a jism sign now we have to read the letter who have the jism sign by joining with the previous letter how we have to read the letter we have to read the letter by joining with the pre previous letter so as you can see by having a jism sign we have to join ba with the previous letter again we have to follow the same thing first we have to read the letters then sign and then sound hamza ba fatha ab hamza ba fatha ab and again here you can see ba is one of the five bouncing letters and you can uh, you know not in one class in the next class you can explain that thing you know there are five bouncing letters in the quran and you can see here the letters which are in blue color are the bouncing letter means whenever we read their sound we have to bounce their sound so we have to bounce the sound for ba like ab instead of saying ab we have to say ab ab we have to bounce its sound and further you can include the five bouncing letters which are qaf ta ba jim dal 
so in that way you can make the uh, practice of the entire lesson but you can explain that lesson uh, in that way before going to start the lesson similarly for the tashdeed sign we can explain the in the same way uh, like can you see the sign uh, which looks like a small w right that sign looks like a small w so what's the name of that sign the name of that beautiful sign which again like the jism sign comes at the top of the letters so the name of that beautiful sign is tashdeed what's the name of that sign tashdeed and now the thing is how we have to read that that letter who have tashdeed sign again first you have to make sure the student know about the sign name properly then move towards the that thing how we have to read the letter now so for the tashdeed the letter who have a tashdeed sign we have to read that letter two times how many times two times what's the name of that sign tashdeed and now how many times we have to read the letter who have tashdeed sign two times and how uh, how we have to read two times one time with the previous letter and then one time with its own sign like hamza and again we have to follow the same thing first letter then sign and then sound like hamza ba fatha ab and then ba fatha ba then you have to make the repetition and then you can move towards the next letter next word uh, so the sum of all that first we have to explain uh, the things properly For the first thing we can say the first we have to engage them with the lesson by asking any one or two question after that we have to explain all the things and we can we can include the uh, sentence which make which help them uh, them to you know to read the lesson uh, more easy more easily and after that we have to make the practice of the new thing we have to explain all the things then we have to make the practice as much as is easier for the student is easier uh, is good for the student to understand the things properly properly and then we have to move towards the next thing three steps we have to engage the uh, engage the student with the lesson by asking any one or two questions Se second thing is we have to uh, explain the things and the third thing is we have to make the repetition which is uh, which uh, you know which is uh, which will be you know good uh, for the student and uh, to understand the things properly to know the thing properly so these are the three steps engage the students uh, explain the things and then make the repetition before going to start any new lesson complete we have completed all the points which are important to become a good and competent quran teacher so we have completed all these points if any one of you have the confusion regarding that you can ask me i can explain again after that we'll move towards further some few points which are way way important to know again to become a very good quran teacher a good and competent quran teacher so we cover all these points uh, how we have to add the students in our skype or zoom context how we have to share the lesson with the students and then we also discuss that how we can how we can uh, divide the 30 minutes properly okay and also we discuss that point in more much more detail which was very very important uh, you know uh, how we can open and make uh, how we can open and send the lesson to our students in detail uh, and also we discussed that how we can start and end the class with the proper manners how we can develop the small things the basic and small things in our students how we can how uh, you know why we should say alhamdulillah and uh, inshallah jazakallah uh, jazakallah khairan kathira and in uh, what's the uh, you know what's the benefits what's the baraka of all these things and also we discussed that thing uh, that point which is very very important to engage the students with the lesson we discussed that thing in much detail and again and again i mentioned that thing which is very very important important to engage the students with the lesson because in that way they able to uh, know the things more properly and also we discussed the last point which was how we can draw different things in the pen like stars and fill the colors of the students choice and then send them for that is why you just need to go in the pa uh, paint app and after that you can draw uh, according to your choice and then fill the color uh, you know for them uh, and then you can send them in the same way which we discussed uh, for the different things uh, to how we can open the lesson then send the lesson so in the same way we can do that thing so we cover all these points uh, which are uh, which are compulsory to know uh, to become a good uh, and a good and competent Quran teacher. If any one of you have any kind of confusion regarding that, you can ask me. I can explain again, and then we will move towards the further points, uh, which are way very important to know. Is everything clear to all of you? Okay, now we can move towards the next point. If anything is, uh, uh, you know, if you all know the uh, all the things properly, then there are some more imp most important things which we have to keep in our mind, which we have to uh, do to become a good and competent Quran teacher. 
uh, for that we have to uh, you know punctuality is must we have to online we have to come online before uh, you know in the beginning you have to come online before three or uh, five minutes uh, the class and also after that we have to make the class of complete 30 minutes and then you have to end the class so punctuality is the first thing after that we must have the good internet connection and the third thing which is very very important is uh when, you know, we the, our background should be noise free for that you can uh, you can collect noise collection headphones from the academy and the third thing you know i just discussed before we must take the class of complete 30 minutes 20 and 22 minutes for the qaida and the quran class the seven or eight minutes for the kalimas uh, prayers or the salah or the other stuff and in this uh, last one or two minutes we have to draw something for them in the paint to make them happy to appreciate them and then we have to teach the small Small, you know the, the small basic things and uh, we can include the further things with the time and the thing which is very very important that we must take classes from the laptop it's not allowed to take the classes from the cell phone because we have to share the screen we have to uh, we have to show the lesson to our student and more properly when the students see the things properly after that the student uh, know properly like uh, how what we uh, what we have to teach to them what uh, they are learning uh, you know here in the class and then uh, you know when we share the screen properly when we show the lesson properly after that they know the things more properly for that it's compulsory to take the classes from the laptop it's not allowed to take the classes from the cell phone that one that thing is very very uh, you know important which you have to follow because once you take the classes from the laptop uh, you know uh, uh, the student if the student will be satisfied then you will get the next student if the student is not satisfied so how you can get the next students and how the student if you are not showing the things properly to your students so how the student uh, you know uh, will be satisfied uh, from you so to make student happy to make student satisfy we have to take the classes from the laptop because after that the student will know the things more properly whenever the student will able to see the things properly so that thing is very very important which we have to do and the other thing is we have to take the classes from the tutoring portal and according uh, for that point how we can take the classes from the tutoring portal uh, for that uh, our small video will be sent will be provided to you uh, we are manager uh, which will help you to uh, to know how we can take the classes from the tutoring portal but it's very very important uh, because it's like a, 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 like an attendance of your students you have to mark the attendance which uh, student take the class you know on that day and how much time you uh, you 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 have to give to your student like uh, you have did you take the class of complete 30 minutes or not like to check that thing it's like an attendance mark and for that uh, you know there will be a small video will be provided to you via manager so we have to take the class of complete 30 uh, minutes and we have to take the classes from the tutoring portal you have to mark the attendance of your student and uh, the seven point which is important with that you know which is again very very important points we have uh, trial classes are very very important so in trial classes we have to do uh, our hundred percent because in, in the first two or three classes the parents also uh, you know uh, the parents also focus that uh, which uh, you know are you uh, teaching uh, to uh, their kids properly or in which way if they like your way of teaching then they will continue further but if they don't so also they uh, they will not continue so the try in the, the first three four trial classes are way very important uh, so we have we should try to do our 100 percent for the trial classes and uh, the eighth point is it's not allowed you know to take classes in pu public areas like park or in in, in the vehicles because uh, there uh, you know we we know that there's a lot of the noise in the background which is no uh, good because in that where the strength we we can't can we our uh, you know our lesson properly to our strength so it's not allowed to take the classes in uh, like uh, the park or in in the vehicles and the ninth point which is very very important that we have to inform uh, to the parents about the students progress in every week and the uh, third and the, and the the point number 10 is don't mute the headphones during the classes unless it's, it's necessary and the 11th point is always get ready five minutes before the class and text to your students on words up or skype i'm ready so we have to we have to on the class time we have to uh, we have to call to our student whenever if the student is not replying then we have to text to our student that i'm reading here i'm i'm ready here the, for the class and if the parent uh, also if, if the student is not replying on whatsapp then you can uh, you can inform to manager after the 10 minutes uh, about that situation and if the parents uh, give ne negative feedback to, so don't argue with them so uh, be patient uh, patient and you know don't argue with them if the patient is uh, if give you the negative uh, feedback and the point number 13 is we just allow to teach english language and try to try to improve it day, day by day so we have to take the classes only in the uh, english language 
and again i discussed before that if the student is offline if the student is not responding on the skype or the zoom app so we have to inform uh, can you hear me properly Yes, so I was saying that if the student is not responding uh, in, uh, you know, in Skype or in the Zoom app. So for that, after 10 minutes, we have to wait for 10 minutes. After that, we have to inform to our manager uh, regarding that situation. So and these are the points which we, we have to follow uh, to become a good and competent Quran teacher. And there are some other things uh, which we have to submit. Uh, inshallah, I will send uh, regarding that in detail, uh, you know, in the, in the group, like which things you have to submit uh, to ac Academy via online or by hand. So you can submit via online or by hand. Inshallah, I will send uh, the detail of these things uh, in the group. So that's all about in all that session, like uh, which how we have to, uh, you know, how we have to teach our student and which things are compulsory to know, uh, which are compulsory to follow. Uh, so that's all about. So after that, if you have any kind of confusion regarding any app, regarding any lesson, regarding any point, you can ask, I can explain. I think all the things is clear are clear to all of you. So best of luck to all of you. That's all for today for all these sessions. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakallah sister.